Hurricane Ian made landfall in southwestern Florida, but it continued and exited through the east coast. The hurricane's winds, waves, and water leaving the other coast vulnerable to Hurricane Nicole. New Smyrna Beach, stacks of debris still sitting outside on the street. Signs that show how high the water got inside of these homes, forcing people to rip out the drywall, take their belongings, and essentially just dump it along the side of the road, waiting for the trash and what was their life to be carried away. Still, stores weren't filled with panic shoppers. There were no gas lines. Boarded up stores were few and far between. And what exactly could a Category 1 hurricane do, many asked with confidence. Unfortunately, they all found out. A sign of things to come, damage along the coast caused by the constant driving waves caused by Nicole. Such a massive wind field just pushing so much water causing erosion here on the beach and another troubling sign caused by this erosion here this was a sea turtle egg These little ping pong shapes this is one of numerous nests along this beach that have been destroyed by this constant wave action sadly just one of the many threats that these species face and so late in the season this coastal erosion is just going to get worse as Nicole creeps towards the east coast of Florida, already again causing damage and much more to come. Some of the highest tides of the year added to the surge brought in by Nicole, and by Wednesday evening, the price to paradise was evident in homes lining the coast by Wilbur by the Sea. In the distance, you might be able to see a backhoe working. They're working as quickly as possible to try and shore up this seawall behind a row of homes here. The seawall was destroyed during Hurricane Ian, and that destruction has been amplified by Nicole's high tides, bringing in just tons and tons of water. You can see, even at low tide now, the water is still crashing up against it. That's just eroding more of the land behind these homes. These homes are literally sitting on the edge, ready to collapse into the ocean. This entire condo building facing the same threat, sitting right on the edge of disaster. Officials with the Volusia County Fire Department and here at Daytona Shores going door to door, evacuating around 150 or so residents from this building. Nicole would make landfall early Thursday morning near Vero Beach. Winds were barely hurricane force, but the wind field was wide. Satellite Beach. Storms moving north and west. You can obviously see and hear these hurricane force gusts and we're seeing the damage like this stoplight that's just dangling down, being smashed against the pavement. We've also been seeing power outages, power lines sparking in these strong hurricane force gusts. One good thing we have not seen is the impact from storm surge with this arrival of Nicole. The fortunate thing is it's, it's made landfall coinciding with low tide, so that's reduced the amount of water coming in. Unfortunately, though, it's not enough to reduce the amount of erosion that's come along with this system. The coastline here on the east coast of Florida has really just taken an absolute beating, eroding away dunes, even undermining homes and threatening structures as big as condo buildings. This is the latest landfalling hurricane on the east coast of Florida in history. And it's a memorable one. With dawn came blue skies, but that wickedly wide wind field was pushing water in from the intercoastal. The hurricane is well inland, but the effects are not. This is the intercoastal, and it's merging in to Port Orange. This is near Daytona Beach. Whitecaps on the street right along the intercoastal coming into Port Orange. This apartment complex, you see, they have a few sandbags trying to keep the water out. People sticking their hands out to see what they can. This is one of the first impacts we've seen coming up to this part of the state. Again, the storm's well inland, but the wind is drawing this water in. While the surge flooding into places like Port Orange and downtown Daytona is destructive, nothing 
was quite like what was being carved out of the coastline over 100 miles away from landfall. Homes that had stood for decades, now crumbling like sandcastles in the shifting sand. Unfortunately, the worst case scenario has happened. Homes collapsing into the ocean. This started with Hurricane Ian, and it's continuing now with Nicole. These waves just relentlessly crashing in, not only collapsing these homes, but this backyard, the next to be threatened. We're actually being asked to leave by the sheriff's office because they're worried about these waves compromising this spot as well. Just like what we're seeing here. These homes were occupied. Of course, now the folks have evacuated. They said Ian destroyed the seawalls, but there was still a backyard here. But unfortunately, over the last couple of days, with the wave action being brought in by this massive wind field with Nicole, it just ate away like a termite. Uh, 1963, I think, is the house next door, and on the other side, probably even longer. Um, for residents that have lived here their whole life, I'm from Florida, but I have not lived here my whole life, um, no, no one's ever seen anything like this. We're worried about the condos, we're worried about rehoming people that are displaced, and this is not going to be a very short recovery. We're going to, this is going to change the landscape of our community. Hurricane Nicole is estimated to have caused close to half a billion dollars in damage, a small fraction of Hurricane Ian, but it finished off much of what that storm started. I'm Jonathan Petromala, an independent journalist. Please like, share, and subscribe.